So we just redid our website. And in this video, we're gonna take you into the Figma to show you everything we thought about when making it. Chris led the design for this initiative. So he's the best person to take us through this whole process, starting with where to begin when taking on a website revamp. It's whatever is gonna give you the most amount of inspiration in the shortest amount of time. And I think for us, there were a couple examples of the team doing some experiments on the brand side, where for example, for our Chrome extension, there were some experimentations with dark mode and punching up the typography and going for kind of a more colorful and bold expression of the brand. And that became a starting point, not only from a content perspective, but also an updated visual look and feel. And how do you explain your product visually when people arrive to your site? So here are some earlier iterations of the site where we're playing with different formats. Obviously all of them have this kind of big hero moment with again, that, that big kind of thesis statement that creates some intrigue. But then the question is, how do you most effectively tell the story as you go down the page? There's a impulse to wanna kind of jump in and start explaining everything. And you, you kind of see that here in some of the explorations where we experimented, for example, with kind of jumping into a zoomed up detail of the product where you could actually scroll through vertically, get all these sections, which then correspond to the tabs that you see up here. I think it, it's something that looked great in Figma, but when we actually felt, felt out that interaction, it was felt like way too much vertical scroll for, for not as much payoff. Let's talk about copywriting. How do you find great copy? So something we spent a lot of time with was finding our words. And there's a lot of emphasis and importance on what we're writing here. Copywriting is a design discipline or it's, it's a piece. It's a piece of design puzzle that is as important as anything else. So for us in this feature area, we were just playing with what is the right length of copy. And so design and, and copy like have that interplay where the text is also kind of a graphic element. So if you're like squinting at it, what is right weight and length? And if it's more than two sentences, for example, do we punch in the first sentence? It doesn't feel like as much text. And I think then we just kind of follow that process where we were playing with visual structure and layout, but also just trying to constantly refine the copy and make it shorter and make it sweeter and say more with less, right? So here in this version, totally just made them like one line and punchy. And in the final, we actually even further trimmed it down and wrote them all to a consistent two line length. Let's go into the hero section. So what was our process here? So what we're looking at here are different animation concepts for this header. When you first come to the, the site, how does this thing reveal, like what is the animation? What is the sequence? And Figma is a great tool for just looking at those keyframes where, especially working with the great front end engineer, this is where design can contribute a lot. Like where does the animation start? I think it also helps you debug some of the things that you may not anticipate in the process. Like if this thing is gonna come in, does it go over the text? Does it go under? Does it, is it transparent? Is it not? Like working through those kind of things. I think the, the cursor is one of those elements that just helps bring the whole thing to life and makes it pop off the page even more. It doesn't do anything here. It's not functional, but it brings this like extra, I don't know, bit of delight and, and that just helps like bring this page to life in a way where every time we tried to remove it, we were like, man, we missed that cursor for some reason. It just, it makes the whole thing feel larger than life and just it brings a little of that kinetic energy back to the page. So I'm sure these iterations could have kept going on. How do you know when you're done? I think one thing that helps take the pressure off a little bit is the idea that, you know, very much like in product development, you can take an iterative approach to these things. And so there are lots of things that we wanted to do or like, wouldn't it be cool if this happened and we have that and I think just having a date helps as a forcing function to be like, even if it's not everything that we want it to be, here's the date that we're marching towards. So that being said, I mean, we did put a ton of time and actually flexed on that launch date to nail some of the ingredients. And I think for us, it's a little bit of a feel thing, you know, in the working group, it's like, is this really like, 
Does it feel complete? Does it feel like it wows? I think that was a, a question that we would kind of collectively ask ourselves in the last couple of weeks. Like, does this wow? How else might we wow? And obviously you don't want to wow every single possible chance that you can, because that would be overwhelming. But in the moments that we felt like we had to do that, like in the introduction to the site, to make that amazing first impression, to tell a very clear story, to bring just like a nice level of fit and finish and polish in the final product. Like those are the things that we spent the most amount of time on. And it was like this kind of a collective, yeah, we, we feel like we've gotten to that point now. And looking at these two side by side, I think we've come to a really cool evolution of the brand where like the same spirit is there. It's the same like tone in copy, it's the same overall vibe, but it's just grown up a little bit, kind of leaning into this dark mode feel, both like helps the product feel a bit more sleek and sophisticated and also lets the product visuals pop a little bit more. Yeah, it feels like a nice evolution for the brand and for, for the way that we talk about ourselves and present ourselves to the world. If you like this video, make sure to follow or subscribe to see our next videos from behind the scenes of Building Jam. Go see the final site at jam.dev and thanks for watching.